Good morning. I think I am live. So if somebody else is there, you can just say hi. I normally have a, a sign that somebody is watching. So when I have a few people, we'll make a start. If you are here, though, start finding a comfortable position, seated, and have dumbbells or weights or plates handy, a scarf or a band towards the end, just have it around you. And we'll start on the floor. We'll start breathing and centering a little bit. So I'll just wait a few moments. I wish we could do live interacting, like in the moment, because it's, it's a good platform, live, but I wish I could see some faces or even some thumbs up. It can be a bit lonely just talking to an empty screen, but yeah, I can see somebody watching now. That's good. So, this is supple strength, by the way. It's a combination of uh, Pilates and yoga. I focus on body awareness so that we can control what we do, what's good for us, find modifications. And to me, it's a platform for anything else that you do physical wise in your life, whether it is, uh, you know, walking, gardening, running, even weight training. So you've got, you've got that awareness and, and the technical foundations to, to just make the body feel good and shape rather than get injured. So that's the goal. Right, so I'll make a start. Find yourselves uh, grounded with the seat bones down. If you want uh, to open the hips a little bit more, see if you can place, instead of crossing the legs, just place both legs down and as close as you feel comfortable. Then we get the shoulders down and back. Find the connection through the abdominal wall and just lift the chest. Now with the hands onto the thighs, start finding a little rotation through the torso. As you go back, take the hip bones forward and try and move the body in one block. And then we go the other way. And again, you don't have to go too far back. Just find the connection. See if your lower back can open a little bit. If your back is very rigid or fused, discs, you don't have to go back. Just find the rotation from the center of your body and trying to relax the shoulders. Now we go side to side. Try and keep the rib cage up and the seat bone down. Just like you try and lengthen, yes, with the shoulder away from your ear and then down away. And again, just keep moving the shoulder side to side. Just notice if your face is relaxed, because that will be an indication that your neck is relaxed as well. Now we get the hands behind our back, lift the chest and then chin towards the chest. Relax the base of your neck then slowly come to the center. We look towards the right side. Feel the stretch at the left side and come back to the center. And to the left. Come back to the center. Now we take the arms up, breathing in. And as you breathe out, take the hands behind. We'll do that again, the same sequence. Leave the chest. Chin to the chest. Breathing out, and up, and look towards the right, so you can breathe in through your nose, and out through your nose. As you come to the center, breathe and arms up, palms together if you want, and then slowly come back down. 
Leave the chest, breathing in, and breathe out chin towards the chest. Follow the belly a little bit, and then come back to the center. And you look towards the right. You can do it with your eyes closed. Back to the center, other side, and back. Now take a deep breath in, arms up, palms together. Just hold for a moment and slowly arms down. Leave the chest and then chin to your chest. Breathing in to come back, look towards the right side back to the center, other side, and we leave that movement for a moment, relax the shoulders, and we cross the legs the opposite way, and if you can, keep both feet on the floor, notice the seat bones grounded, breathing in, arms up, slowly come back down once you feel the fingertips into the floor leave the chest again chin to your chest and up and we look to the left this time and back to the center and then to the right and we do that sequence three more times breathing in Breathing out, lifting the chest, chin to your chest, breathing out. And up. Once you find the neck in the center, and look towards the left, and back to the center, and towards the right. So you want the head over the shoulders, breathing in. And relax the face as much as you can. Now we take another breath in, just lifting the chest to create the space. Breathe out, chi into your chest. Hollow the belly, hollow the chest. And up. We look towards the left. With a soft face, back to the center. And towards the right. And to the center. Breathing in, arms up. Keep breathing out through your nose. And then we leave the chest again. Find the head over the shoulders, chin to your chest. And back up. And we go towards the left. And to the center. And to the right. And we release. So now from here with the hands onto the thighs, we find that little circle. As we did at the beginning. So we'll do both ways and then the other. So you don't have to lean back too much. If you do, it's a little pelvic tilt on the side. So find the four corners. Forward, side, back and side with the body moving in one block. So that makes the lower back and the lower abdominals start engaging. So the lower back opens as the lower abdominals engage. So now we stay here for a moment with the hands onto the thighs, lift the chest, press the heel of the hand into the thigh and tip forward from the hip. So now try and lift the chest and just look down a little bit, the eye gaze, but without rounding your upper back. So you keep the shoulders down and back, and then come back up again. And again, breathing in, tip from the hip, flat back, and then slowly come back. One more time, breathing in, breathing out. Now you come as forward as you can, hollow the belly, and now relax the forearms. If you cannot touch the forearms down, just find a good position. If you can only stay here, really hollow the belly to relax the spine from the seat bones to the crown of your head. If you can come a little lower, please do. 
Make sure the seat bones are relaxed and breathe. Slowly rolling up. And we cross the legs the other way. Ground the seat bones, or we start with your foundation and get the hands onto the thighs. Press the heel of the hand towards the thigh, lift the chest up and tip from the hip. Keep coming forward and then slowly back. And two more times. So the point here is to keep engaging our upper back, find strength, and as you tip from the hip, imagine you're over a cliff, just peeping over, draw that belly in and sit yourself back up. One more time. Now leave the belly, yeah, hollow or leave the chest, hollow the belly. And then as you find the length of the spine, undulate chin to your chest. And you can stay here or you can come a little bit lower with the seat bones grounded. Relaxing the head, relax the neck. Slowly roll yourself up. And we start with a stretch before we come up and we'll finish with a stretch. You get both feet in line with your knees and in line with your hips. Your fingertips forward or out to the side. And we start pressing the floor away, pelvic tilt forward, leave the thighs off the floor and slowly come back. So try and press the hands into the floor to lift yourself up. Hips and thighs forward, even if it's one inch. Yeah, you can just do one inch, lift yourself. Now, next time, as you lift, cross one leg on top of the other and sit yourself down. So the important part here, we're going to stretch the hips and the glutes. Make sure the seat bones are grounded, your chest is lifted, the foot is flexed, and then you push forward. If you want to increase the stretch, walk that foot the supporting one forward and you sit yourself closer again now we need the chest lifted flex the foot and push the knee forward relax and we do it again breathing in to lift chest breathing out to push the knee forward keeping the foot flexed one more time relax breathing in breathing out and slowly release. We do the other leg on the side. Find a good position. Lift yourself up and cross the other ankle to the other thigh. Sit yourself down. Just see what position feels best for you. Then you can walk. And if you can still keep the chest lifted, just see how you feel. Otherwise, move that foot forward now we breathing in to lift the chest and as you breathe out push that knee forward keeping the foot flexed we do that two more times relax bend the elbows a little bit breathing in push the floor away to lift the chest breathing out to press the knee forward one more time relax breathing in Breathing out and push and slowly release. That's good. So now from here, we come onto that 90-90 position and we get the heel towards the glutes. What we want is a little pelvic tilt. Try that the lower back. I'll show you from the side. The lower back is not arching like that. I'm kind of sticking my yeah my belly would open try not to be like that so you are with a neutral spine and the tail you see yeah the tail is under that allows that stretch here on the hip flexor the front of your thigh as well now from here get the heel towards your uh, bottom and direct the hips towards the knee that is on the floor and now you can put the hand you can put the forearm 
Just make sure that your body is relaxed and your neck. You can go all the way down to the floor if you want. Slowly roll up from the lower back. And now from here, cross the leg. The leg that is back, you cross it in front and we come onto a seated twist. Breathing in. And then as you breathe out, turn the entire body towards the knee, back arm, just sliding the floor or, or just grazing the floor without too much pressure. You can take the arm back up, back arm up and relax the shoulder down. Slowly come back down and we change sides. So you come into that 90-90 position. And again, as we start, just find a good angle. The seat bone, especially the front seat bone, has to be down. Pelvic tilt, because then you feel free to do anything else. And once you've got that, hollow the belly. Keep that heel towards the glute. And again, you can put the forearm down. You can maybe, yes, if you find yourself... Yeah, square the hip towards that knee and then slowly just relax down. Slowly roll up from the lower back and we come onto the knees, onto our all fours, come onto a cat and cow stretch before we come back up. Now from here we spread the fingers out, heels down to the floor, elbows rolling in. You want the elbows in to engage the tricep. Then as you push the floor away, allow the shoulders to, to set back. Knees are under the hips, hands are under the shoulders, tuck the toes. Before we do the cat and the cow stretch, take a little stretch forward and back. When you go back, try not to arch your lower back. Keep a neutral spine. So it's a little pelvic tilt. If anybody needs more information, by the way, on the pelvic tilt, drop me a comment. And I can either send you a little video or I can show you a little picture. But basically the pelvic tilt is where the hip bones are forward and up. And you feel the lower back opening a little bit. If you have a fused disc or your back is very tight, you may not be able to do that much of a pelvic tilt, but then find the connection with your lower abdominals. So when you come forward, you keep that neutral spine. And as you go back, lengthen your arms a little bit. That's good for the wrists as well. When you come forward, you can come forward of your hands or not. If you have to come forward of your hands, Make sure your arms are not long and strong. One more. Now we walk the hands back. Maybe we can take a cat and cow stretch. Yes, yes. Take a cat and cow stretch before we go back. Find a good foundation and then chin towards the chest. Breathing out as you do the cat. Breathing in as you open the chest. Breathing out. And we've got two more. Last one. I think I'm not counting very well today. Walk the hands back and see if you can stay in that crouch position here. That's very good for the thighs to stretch the ball of your feet. If you want a little bit of strength here, you can take the arms forward and come up halfway and then down halfway. And when you feel ready, lengthen the legs all the way up and relax the hands shake the legs a little bit and if you grab the weights plates or dumbbells or cans of foot 
we'll keep the feet facing forward, right leg goes back and the front knee is bent. Now the palms are facing the back wall or wherever you are, face the back, lifting the chest and as you dip from the hip, ground the back heel. That will start stretching the calf and the hamstring. Now we leave the back heel and place the back heel down. As you leave the back heel, lengthen the front leg and down. And if the arms are too much, keep the hands by the side of the body and that's also good. With a little bit of weight, what happens is that the arms are long and that allows your upper back to open and to work a little bit more. One more. Last one. Try and take the arms away. Now tip forward, lift the back foot and bring the knee in. We take that leg back and up. So I would like to find that movement without the lower back arching, keeping the hips square. And one more. Last one. Place that foot back down onto the floor. Bend the back knee and shake the legs. And we come onto the other side. So again, the other foot is bent, the supporting leg, front foot is bent, back heel grounded to the floor. Square the hips and the shoulders to the front knee, palms facing the back, wherever you are, and then as you lift the back heel, lengthen the front leg, bend the front knee, back heel down. And again, breathing in. So what you're doing is rolling the foot as much as you can, that to walk, yeah, you need to feel that back leg and that propulsion yeah, from the foot. That's what initiates your stride. Just think about that as well. Whether you run or whether you walk, you need that. And then next time, come forward, leave the back knee, and you can either tap down or keep the knee bent and keep coming forward and back and see if when you come back you feel a pelvic tilt rather than bringing the knee in on its own find that movement from the lower back opening yes pelvic tilt engage the lower abdominals to hold that knee up one more and press the heel down, final stretch, bend the back knee to come up and shake the legs. That's good. So now just to finish with a little stretch on the upper body and the legs, keep the feet grounded, the toes up and almost come a bit pigeon toed so that you feel the side of the leg stretching. Then you almost leave the arches of your feet and slowly place, you can even leave the big toes away and then place the toes, the big toes, slightly. So the weight of our body is more on the heels and the side of our feet. Now relax the arms down, lifting the chest, bend the knees and we do those swings with the arms up and then slowly down. So we're trying to lengthen the legs, keeping the hips still and arms long. Breathing in. So allow, if you're using the weights, the way to lengthen your arms and lengthen your back. So actually, your arms will lengthen more if your back is long as well. Breathing out, breathing in. And we have four more. Breathe and lower. And three. Last two. One more. And relax. Shake the legs. 
And I'm just going to do one more exercise for the legs, a little bit of balance, so you can choose. If your balance is not too good, keep the toe on the floor and you open out and you come back. You open out and back. If your balance is good, keep that knee forward and up and you do the same thing. So just think that the knee goes out with the entire thigh. Yeah, the thigh opens out and back from the hip bone. Now, as you open out, suck the belly in and grow one inch taller. One more, hold it out, lift and lower. And really press the side of the foot of your supporting leg back to the center and relax. Now, to come on to uh, active recovery, leave the heels and take the arms forward as you sit back. Breathing in and breathing out. Lifting the heels and then take a seat back as far back as you can. If the arms forward are not good for the shoulders, cross the arms in front and then release. Breathing out, take a seat. So you've got an imaginary chair and the hips are back. Your knees are tracking on the second and the third toe. So you can keep the toes out a little. You can keep them facing forward, but wherever they track, make sure the knees or the, yeah, the knees are with the second and the third toe in line. Two more times. Last one. And shake. So we go on to the other side. Again, you can put the toe down and then with the hip square, open and close. Or if your balance is good, the leg comes forward and up. And you go out and back. As you open the thigh out, suck the belly in keeping that little pelvic tilt. That is what will activate the glutes and that's the power that we'll have to walk and to run, let alone to stand up, yeah? Because we all need a little bit of power in the glutes. Functional glutes are good. Hold it and we lift up and down, up and down. Keep the chest lifted return and we do the heel lifts again but this time keep the weights away from here leave the heels arms up heels down and swing now we go with a little flow you can leave the heels or not and keep breathing out and breathing in four more. So the point here is that you either look ahead or you look down, but find the flow to relax your arms, relax the neck, relax the head. One more. And release. Shake the legs a little. Keep the feet a little bit wider than your hips. Lace the fingers. Press the heel of the hand down towards the floor. Take a deep breath in, arms up. And set the shoulders down and back. Now we take a side stretch. Grounding the feet. And C-shape the spine. Breathing in. As you hollow the bottom waist. Open the top of your waist. Now think the same in the space between the chin and your chest or the shoulder and your ear. Make a little hollow between the shoulder and your ear to relax the other side of the neck. One more time each side. Breathing in and breathing out. Back to the center. Relax the shoulders, one way rolling and then the other, 
or you can do two and two. Just keep the elbows a little higher and then do one and one. Keeping the shoulders rolling and the hands and the arms relaxed and then move the other way. Now we try and swim. Yeah, like you're swimming. Move the arms away and take it back. Try and keep the legs grounded. And you move one hip and then the other. Now try and keep the hips very still and see what happens. And as you go back, try and keep the hips very still. If you find a bit more isolation, that's good. So it can happen that you can move the arm back and that hip forward. Be aware of that. Yes, as long as the hip is not going without any control. But then when you stabilize the hips and you rotate, yes, the upper body, the arms go with it, you start shaping all that area yeah the core area standing up which is a great way as well to uh, become stronger now slowly we do a body roll grab the weight away again and you keep the feet outside the hips chest is lifted and we start with the chin towards the chest hollow the chest Remember you have a tennis ball between the chin and your chest. Keep opening the back of your body. Leave the belly. Relax the head. Now slowly come back up again as soon as you touch down. From the lower back. Keep coming up. And you can take the arms out to the side. And open slowly come back down and we do it again relax the hands leave the chest chin to your chest relax the base of the neck think about hollow the front of your body to relax the back of your body slide the back of the hands in between your thighs, relax the head, relax the neck, bend the knees if you want, and lengthen, bend the knees and lengthen the legs, one more, relax the head again, and slowly roll up from the lower back, Leaving the arms hanging. Open the arms out to the side. If that feels good. And then slowly come back down. And we leave the weights to the side. And we come down onto our sitting position. To stretch the legs before we finish. So you grab your band, your scarf, whatever's good for you. And then you wrap the balls of your feet with the band and leave quite a generous size here. That is not too tight. Your shoulders are down and back and point and flex the feet. Point and flex the feet. Now you keep the band a little tighter. Keep coming forward. And see if you can keep your back long. Relax the head. Now leave the band. And you can, if you reach, you can, the balls of your feet, pull the ball of your foot backwards. So you allow your own body weight Yes, all the way back. Your shoulders are down and back. And then see if you can relax the neck here. Relax the head. As you breathe out, visualize the length of your hamstrings from the seat bones to the heels. 
And if you feel all right, then start coming down, relaxing the head, relaxing the neck. Slowly roll yourself up, bend the knees, and get the hands onto the shins. So here's the pelvic tilt again. Hip bones go up. You can take the hands forward, or you can keep them here or here. Leaning back, chin to your chest, and come back up. And we do that two more times. Leaning back, and come back up. Next time you go back, you can lengthen the legs, point the toes, and lift yourself up. And if that's not too good, keep the knees bent, and come back up. So if you can lengthen the back of your legs, stay with that position, point the toes away, leaning back, Breathing in and try and find a 90 degree angle as much as you can, 90 degrees between the legs and your torso. Leaning back, chin to your chest. We have four more to finish. Breathing out as you go back, like a cat and breathing in. And three. And last two. And last one. And relax. Shake or roll the shoulders a little bit side to side. And I will leave it here for this week. Again, if you have any, um, I'll just show you the pelvic tilt. Should have started from there, right? So if you see me from the side, that is the pelvic tilt. You're trying to hide the tail forward, but keeping the shoulders relaxed as well. Is that power, that contraction that you have into your lower abdominals. And that is, as you know, very beneficial, the pelvic tilt for everything. Have a great week and I will see you next Monday at 11. Bye.